you're saying. I'd like to comment on the point uh, that you were speaking about fear. One of the quotes that I like to live by, it says, never let fear decide your fate. And as you were saying, when fear takes over, it just stops you from seeing the true beauty of the world. Now, getting back to your question, uh, coming here in Japan, I truly thought there would be a little bit of a cultural barrier. But in Egypt, as I've always said to a lot of the Miss International staff, we call Japan the planet of Japan because of how exquisite we think of the values and the traditions of Japan, how Japanese people, they're extremely, extremely proud of their nation and they know how to represent themselves and their culture. Mm -hmm. They do know how to um, incorporate their traditions and their culture with the, uh, the modern world that we live in. Um, I, I kind of thought that maybe the language would be a barrier, but I've noticed that people here are extremely welcoming. Uh, they always try to accommodate us, even in the street. We could be like asking someone for a help, and they would even bring out their phones, and they would try to help us, they would take from their time. So um, yeah, that's what I thought for me would be a little bit of a challenge, but thankfully I've had an incredible, an incredible experience here. Thank you very much. That's good to hear, thank you very much. I was afraid coming here and to represent my country because we not like as people had this outside outsider statue. I was studying in France and I was like, will I be enough able to represent my country here in Japan? And will people people welcome my country here in Japan? And thanks God. Was till last week was an amazing experience for me as a Malagasy person. Did you, did you still think we have that funny hair, that hairstyle? Sometimes when I go to a country, like a very far away, the country from Japan, uh, people still think we are always wearing kimono and have funny <laughs> hair. Did you think that's what we are? You no, know, you know, actually I was expecting to go here because Japan is like, an example, when, I'm sorry, I don't know if I had to talk about that, but when you have an um, atomic bomb come on your territory and to be able to be one of the most biggest power countries in the world is just an example. And since our independence, Madagascar is getting more and more bigger. And I can't wait for the day that our country will be able to become a country like yours. So I did not think that you work working with all the time, I think. I just knew that this is a working, hard-working people here in Japan. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Haiti? Um, hello, my name is Cassandra Chiri. I represent my beautiful country, Haiti, and my English is very, very bad. <laughs> But I'm so very happy to be here, and thank you for your thank you for the commentary. I really learned about um okay about the slide and what you what you showed um before. So thank you. That's good. I am uh, I'm glad that you liked it. So today uh, we have three different topics for three different misses. And uh, uh, we are talking about personal challenges. Like uh, in my case, you know, I used to fight in a ring, so it was uh, challenging enough to beat up other person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should try. Okay. So um, uh, for, uh, I don't need a microphone actually. <laughs> For personal <laughs> challenge, it would be Miss Madagascar, is that correct? Okay. Yes. For, uh, so, could you tell me a bit about your personal challenge? Um, my first, um, how, how to say that? I prepared something, so I'm going to do it like freestyle, okay? Okay. Um, yes. Uh, I born in Madagascar and I born like a special kid because I had double nationality. I am as French as I am Malagasy and this is something that every parent wish for their child. So I grew up knowing that sooner or later I will leave my country and I will leave my family to go in France 
And actually, I couldn't wait for that moment. And when I was 14, finally, it happened. My mom took a bank credit to buy me a flight ticket to send me in France for high school. She's such a strong woman, an independent one, which is not that much seen in Madagascar. She worked hard and did sacrifices to pay back that bank credit with her maid's salary. So I remember when I left Madagascar, my feet didn't even touch the floor because I was about to go in paradise. And I was so wrong. I spent two years trying to introduce myself in a new family. But as far as in Madagascar, your parent is taking your cousin as, your, as their own children in France is not the case. They make you know that you are not their child. So two years after, another home took me in her house. And with her husband, they just took me and sisters and helped me to be a strong and a beating woman. I was 16 and they told me, you have to make your own money. So for summer, I was waitress. And little job by little job, I became to be like every child, sweet clothes, eating and counting for lunch. And two years after, I saved enough money to go back home to visit my family. And I, I couldn't go back home without empty handed. I, I get into the top first known class prepar preparatory school for prestigious school in France, which is the city of Lourdes. I was also at the same time in Paris Sorbonne University and working, and my parents were so proud. And I remember when I get back in the Malagasy territory, I felt ashamed of my way of thinking four years back because I saw the beauty of my island actually. I feel this, our waves caress. I, I hear the beauty of the melody of our jungle and I was breathing this fresh air in the height of our mountains. I felt blessed to burn in Madagascar. But my heart was like full of sadness because I saw that poverty, seeing all the child and orphans on the street. And that year I promised something, two things to myself. Every year, Esmeralda, you will fight home to spend time with your beloved. And you're gonna fight for those child sooner or later. So the year after, I came back home. The year after too. But my first year in master degree was really tough because my mom had health, very serious health issues. And in Madagascar, hospitals are firm. If you do not have money, you just die. So I thank God that I was a working student able to be there for my mom at this time. So during the summer, I decided to know, go back home, but just to work three months in a tomato factory. And the year after, I had to end my five years of university with an internship. So I didn't go back home either. And after that, I find a job in a little telecom group. So I did not come back home. In February, my mom tried to call me all day long. But my dad passed away because of an heartache. And I remember that I felt because for two years I did not go back home. And I remember I was a child in the street and I was like, You are not going to wait to be a CEO of a huge firm to find a solution for this child. So
So I applied at Miss Madagascar and my target was to meet high hierarchy people and economic leader to build a strong foundation for this child. But no. But I met church people and they told me, find the funds and we will have your back. So as a young financial controller, to be here at Miss International and do all those expenses, it's for me an investment. And my target, it's not only to make you know that Madagascar is a cartoon, but it's also a country, but it's to go back home with serious contacts, strong contacts, to defend that code. Because deep down in my heart, I know that this next generation is our country hope. It's our country solution to be raised with love, empathy, and to have knowledge in your brain it is Madagascar's solution. And those child are poor children, so they know about poverty. And if they became leader, the target would not to be to fill their pocket of money, but they will think about people as they knew poverty. So I hope being here, I will find really people take my hand and help me with church build that foundation.
because today I consider myself very fortunate to have many possibilities in this life. As I am from a poor family and difficult childhood, I knew the needs of God's children, but I had the opportunity to meet several wonderful people in ways to help me in my life. So today I would like to help the children in my country. In my organization, we offer a home for children where they can get education, food, and recreational activities. By removing the children from the streets, we are called again to disperse the crime. In Haiti, the elderly population is vulnerable sector. More than more than in all of them are in poverty and the other four suffer of physical violence. We, we offer to this category guidance, physical social and legal assistance to adults over 60 years of age who are in situation violence. The reports can made be by any person who knows about someone who needs our help. The old men or women a place in residence with full accommodation, for example, lunch, breakfast, and dinner. Medical, psychological, and nursing service to for 20, 40 hours. We are working to create a center called assistance for other women in my country. We are looking for women victims of gender violence 24 hours a day or every day of the of the year. It will be in a in a, in a most, sorry, in animals, content and advice on topics related to physical physiological, sexual, economic, patrimonial and violence. Our goal will be to guide the victim in different situations. They are going to be there before, during or after an episode of violence. Since we are not intended to generate many profiles. For those who have already support the organization by sending us a donation or giving us your time. I personally would like to thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your unconditional help and your actions in favor of our purpose and the daily efforts of our volunteers could not be so effective without your support. Thank you so much. design and journalism company. Mm -hmm. So I make posters, flyers, um, business cards and everything to promote other businesses out in the world and online. But are you a graphic designer yes. yourself? Oh. When, uh, did, when did you start your business? Um, I'm still a student but um, uh, I figured that I already learned very quick and I want to learn more. So that's why I started making flyers and posters for companies of my friends. And then they said, why don't you just start your own business while studying? So I right. started my own business while studying and now I'm learning and working at the same time. Do you have any suggestion to uh, Miss Tabuti to get more money mm -hmm. to fund? Um, any good idea? <laughs> I want to listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, modeling is already a very good way to earn uh, good money. But if I were you, maybe 
you could do uh, online a little bit more. Like for example, I am now vlogging the Miss International pageant and maybe you could start vlogging your own life because I think a lot of girls are interested in the modeling world and they can see what you are doing then. And on, on the online business, that's um, like it's a very new business nowadays and you can get make really good money out of it if you um, get people interested in your life. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And also one uh, proper suggestion from uh, Chairman Kimomura uh, Kaijo. So she is one of the most powerful and successful women in this Do you ever know? How uh, can we get money? <laughs> with your issue I think is the best the best way to help um, the people in need is to discover their talents and they can use their talents to put food on their table to make them better people for tomorrow for an example we have disabled people we have uh, tangible to give to the world. Being, being um, underprivileged doesn't mean you can't reach what you want. So educate them on how to live their life, 
how to discover their talents mostly so that they can reach out for, for tomorrow what they want for the world and what they want to be seen uh, in the world as, as in, the, in, this, um, in this world that we are living in. So I think discovering talent, what they are capable of, and show it to the world. People are very interested in such things like that. Tourists and all that, they can be interested in seeing people singing, creating groups, making crafts and all that. It can help as well. and cultural situation. Whether it's in my country or in any country, we need to have an open discussion. Uh, such as uh, in my country, it's the women's situation and representation in many fields as well as aspects of the society. The roots of cultural issues in my country are deeply connected and dictated by different ideologies. You see, it goes from traditional to extremist, open-minded, and each ideology, it's as if they speak a different language. 
And as they say, and from my expertise as an interpreter, sometimes lots of things get lost in translation. You see, the essence of all issues I see, sorry, in my region of the world is the lack of understanding for the core values of coexisting and respecting each uh, individual's opinion and point of view. Now, I'm a firm believer that for us to reach justice and gender equality in any country, in any society, at workplace, as well as to be accepted as active members of society, we must take example of nations such as Japan, where each and every person's opinion and input is extremely valued and appreciated. Now, bear in mind that Egypt's location, being in the heart of Middle East, as well as in the north of Africa, it does affect a great deal of people's traditions and mindset. To some, it could cause a source of an identity crisis, and that's something we're trying really hard to fight. Um, one second. Now, actually, times now are changing in Egypt. Uh, there seem to be a new day on the horizon, and that's giving us a lot of hope. Uh, the Egyptian parliament have seen great changes Actually, the percentage of female representation is now 14.3%, which is the highest since 1975. Uh, also, electric, el electricity rates across Egypt, they have decreased as well. They used to be 25.3% and now they're 20%. In my, pre my previous year in pageantry, actually one of my um, causes, it was education. Uh, to some might know, I volunteered at the age of 17 years old in South America, it's an experience that completely changed my life and perspective as a young woman. It made me realize how much education and providing medical care to children, it's something extremely crucial. I'm trying not to get emotional, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, actually, education for us is important, especially in the upper side of Egypt, where it's a very male-dominant region of Egypt. So there really always, uh, there's a United Nations campaign there. And I've tried before coming here to actually uh, cooperate with them, and I will be continuing, obviously, when I get back. Uh, now, in the few uh, years in Egypt, there was some winds of change. Uh, women are actually now, this might sound as a shock, um, most of the Egyptian families, the main provider for them, 40% actually of Egyptian families is women. Um, and just something for you to know about like the society. It could seem as a shock, for you to think, but Middle Eastern societies is extremely woman driven. It's the woman that controls everything in the household, uh, in work. It's something that could seem a bit of a shock, but it is true. Um, also, um, as a young Egyptian woman, I did have to face a lot of cultural issues. The fact that I, from a very young age, uh, age I was able to travel abroad, uh, whether it's to study or to volunteer. There seems to always be a certain um, aspect that I see of elder generation being intimidated, especially by young women who are carrying a different mentality, a different way of thinking. And it's something that we really are trying so hard to change. Uh, personally, I would like to share an experience. I've actually had to quit one job because my boss, who was 55 years old, um, he really hated the idea of me being 18 years old and having a bit of a higher rank as an interpreter in the job, which is a bit disappointing because he should have taken me as a daughter or as someone to work with to teach. Because yes, maybe I have skills in language, but definitely age gives you more skills than anything else. Also, one more thing that I would like to uh, comment uh, when it comes to cultural issues as a miss. Um, the Egyptian society, it seems to have a very negative uh, image and perception of what a beauty queen is. I think it's also around Africa, which seems to be a bit of an issue. Uh, but I truly believe that the stigma of the negative aspects of how people portray beauty queens is to blame because of people who work within the pageantry. Now, I'm very grateful to tell you that I have been currently, I think, almost two years in pageantry in my country, trying as hard as I can to change that perspective. And actually, people are, people are starting to have a bit of a change of heart. Now for me, a miss, or Miss International, she's not just a pretty face. She's an intelligent, well-spoken queen with a very empathetic heart. She doesn't represent a certain social class. She does not represent a certain criteria of society. She's relatable, she's approachable, and most important, she's a queen with a heart. 
Now, my country, I know that it's facing lots of difficulties as my beloved continent is, but I'm a firm believer that setbacks, they always lead the way for greater comebacks. Kochicho, arigato gozaimashita. also in, uh, in Japan, because I, the stay that I've had here in Japan, I noticed that there's a lot of links between the Japanese community, uh, society, I mean, and also the Egyptian one. We're very traditional in a very good way. We want to make it forward, yet holding on to our traditions. So some of them, especially the elder generation, they may have a bit of a, a closed mind, but definitely a more of a younger generation that have an open heart and an open mind. And when it comes to actually, um, how they would perceive a Japanese woman or ja the Japanese people. They're very welcoming to the Japanese people because they're one of the most respectful people of our culture. As I was talking to Mr. Fred yesterday, I was telling him that it's extremely heartwarming for me and very surprising. Uh, when I even see people in the street, Japanese people, they want to take a photo with me. They say how much they love my country and how much they visit it. And I've had a brief conversation with the ambassador of Japan in Egypt and he did comment to me that the, um, the percentage of Japanese tourists uh, did increase in the last two years. So you're more than welcome to come to Egypt and you have to try the food and we do not have camels in the street. <laughs> <laughs>